Hi guys, welcome back to Mark's Game Pass with by Susan here on YouTube channel. Today we are going to discuss English Stage 3, Paper 1 Nonfiction from year 2023. It's Cambridge Primary Progression Test. On the left side is the inserts or the reading. On the right side is the question paper. Paper 1 is nonfiction. The total duration for this paper is 1 hour. And answer all question. Total marks 50. Section A is reading for 30 minutes and Section B is writing. So both Section A and B are important. They carry both 25, 25 marks that make up 50 marks. So let's get started with uh, our first question. For each and every question, there will be time in the world for 10 seconds for you to get your answer in. After you can match with the discussion. So that's one way of uh, easy learning to prepare for your exam progression test for this stage three. For parents who want to print out the insert, you may take a screenshot and have it print out while your kids do the paper. Well, let's get started. Okay, first we just uh, see the question. This is section A, uh, text A, part 1, to answer question 1 till 3. So let's read text A, part 1, to answer question 1 till 3. So let's get uh, started the reading. Okay. One or two minutes, okay? Alright, let's answer question one, two, three, guys. Uh, stage three, student. Let's get started. Stage three. Uh, question one: What is the purpose of text A? T one box. Is it to amuse, to inform, to instruct, to persuade? Mom, you can do it. Alright, let's check out the answer guys. Uh, if you've not finished, you may pause this video. So the purpose for text A is to inform about the two polar regions, about Arctic and Antarctic. So that's it. Not to amuse, not to instruct or persuade. Next, move on to second question. Okay. Here you go, question 2, lines 5 to 8, let's mark the 5 to 8. Okay, lines 5 to 8 is in yellow box. So, question 8, with three adjectives. Describe the coldest times of the year in the polar regions. Uh, 10 seconds, you get answer from this box only. Okay, let's check out the answer, friends. So the answer is long, dark, and freezing. So long, dark, and freezing. These are three adjectives that describe the coldest times of the year in the polar regions. Let's take a look further about adjectives. Let's take a look closer about adjectives. Well, adjectives is... An adjective describes a noun. Can we describe the color, blue, the size, big, small, sound, loud, quiet, and etc. Shape, egg, oval, round, or it describes number, few, many, taste, sweet, sour, weather, cloudy, wind, texture, smooth, rough. These are the example of adjectives. These are the release of 
many adjectives according to the alphabetical order. So, cloudy, clear, cold, and fluttering. All right. Okay. Uh, nasty, naughty. So, this all all adjective. Let's move on to the next question. All right. Question still. Question B in the same box. We answer 2B, so 2B from the same box. We got the answer for 2B, plants and animals can live in the polar regions. Give one word to tell us that the writer is surprised by this. Okay, we got answer from you, 10 seconds. Alright, let's check out the answer. Friends. It goes so amazingly is the word amazingly. Amazingly, some plants animals still survive. That is one word that tells us the writer is surprised by this. Alright, let's move on to next question 2C. Well, question 2C give one word which show that a lot of animals go to the polar regions in the summer. So still seem from the same box. Ten seconds. Okay, have you got the answer, friends? Let's check it out. If you have not, you may pause this video to make time for uh, finding your answer. Okay, the answer is flock. Animals flock, it means uh, go lots of animals, lots of animals. Flock to the polar areas to feed and nest. Okay, now we move on to question three, friends. Oops, sorry. So there's still 2D. 2D means we will still get the answer from the same box. 2D says, look at the sentence during their short summers. When the sun shines all the time, animals flock to the polar area to feed and nest. What type of sentence is this? Check one box. Is it simple, complex, compound, conditional? So... This is the sentence during their short. We don't have to even see the box because the sentence is given already in here. So the sentence is already given in here. What type of sentence is this? Ten seconds. Okay, let's check out the answer, friends. So the answer is complex. But how do we know it's complex? Why is not simple or compound or condition? Let's take a look of each definition of simple, complex, compound, and conditional type of sentence. Well, simple, compound, and complex sentence. Simple sentences is a sentence that consists of just one independent clause. What are the examples of simple sentences? So here are the examples of simple sentences. It rained for three days. So one independent clause. The second one, the streets in my neighborhood flooded. And these two simple sentences can be combined, joined in to make a compound sentences. So compound sentences from these two simple sentences is it rained for three days so the streets in my neighborhood flooded so this is a compound sentence so compound sentences is a com consists of two independent clauses that's why we join two simple sentences to make a compound sentence so they are joined by a coordinating conjunction or by a comma and the coordinating conjunctions are fan boys, fan f for four, a for n, n for nor, 
B for but, O for or, Y for yet, S for so, fanboys. So example, he was tired for he went to bed early. I cooked dinner and he washed the dishes. Jane has a red car, but Jill has a blue car. So these are the example of compound sentences. Now if we join two simple sentences, we can make compound sentences. Tom completed his work he put in his binder. The first simple sentence, the second simple sentence. Now to join them to make a compound sentence, Tom completed his work and put it in his binder. The next example is Harris mowed the lawn. He earned a hundred dollar. So in compound sentence, Harris mowed the lawn. So he earned a hundred dollars. Next, another two simple sentences. Julie doesn't like seafood. Full stop. The second sentence, second simple sentence. She doesn't like cabbage. Full stop. So in compound sentences, we combine these two simple sentences with the conjunction nor. Julie doesn't like seafood, nor does she like cabbage. Alright, so we hope it's clear how to identify simple sentence and compound sentences. Now, the next is complex sentences. Complex sentences contain an independent clause and at least one dependent clause. So example, we have two simple sentences. Mom is taking me to buy shoes. Second sim simple sentence, mom picks me up. Now, we will combine this to make a complex sentence. So we put after in front. After she picks me up, comma, mom is taking me to buy shoes. Or we can change the order by writing the main clause first, the independent clause. Mom is taking me to buy shoes after, is the connective, she picks me up, is the subordinate clause. After she picks me up, after she picks me up is subordinate clause because this is a dependent clause. The dependent clause does not have its meaning on its own. That's why it's called dependent. Dependent on the main clause. Mom is taking me to buy a shoes. This is an independent claw. Right? So we hope it's clear about complex sentences. Now this uh, are the example of complex sentences. Uh, although I am not very good comma. I really enjoy playing football. I like to see the North Pole comma but I will never go where it, it is that cold. Because he didn't know the route well, comma, he drove slowly. So these are the example of complex sentences. The dependent clause is the sentence that follow after the conjunction. Because he did not know the route well, is dependent clause. Although I'm not very good, is dependent clause. Now let's take a look at the conditional sentence. We are just uh, going to discuss two type. Type of conditional sentences. So this is easily identified by the word if. Zero conditional is type of conditional sentences that express a fact or habit. If you mix blue and yellow paint, comma, it turns green. Now, first conditional express a realistic future consequence. If we work hard, comma, we will be prepared. So, remember, conditional sentences is if. Complex sentences is an independent and at least one dependent clause. Compound sentences, two independent clause with fanboys. And simple sentences only contain a single independent clause. That's it. Next, let's move on to the next one. So, uh, the answer for this is complex. So during their short summer is the dependent clause. When the sun shines all the time, another dependent clause. So two dependent clause. 
This is the main clause. Animals flock to the polar area to feed and nest. This is the main clause with two dependent clauses. The first dependent clause during the short summers. The second dependent clause when the sun shines all the time. So we have it clear for this question. Let's move on to question three. Okay, again we sum up. Dependent clause in yellow during the short summer. Another dependent clause when the sun shines all the time. Independent clause animal flock to the polar areas to feed and nest. So let's move on to question three. So this is question three. Look at lines nine to twelve. Okay, lines nine to twelve is in yellow box. Which word means stay alive? Right? Again, which word means stay alive? Okay, so let's find the answer from this box. We'll be given a um, few seconds, 10 seconds. Uh, the timer. So let's get started and find your answer. Okay, guys, let's check out the answer. If you're not finished tracing, uh, you may pause this video. So, the answer for this will be survive. So, from this box, stay alive, stay alive. And here is a so, in here, all living things have to eat to survive. Survive is the word means stay alive. So we have it clear. Next question four. Well, question four. Now read text A part two. Text A part two. In the insert and answer question four to six. Look at lines thirteen to seventeen. So we will read this for a few seconds, ten seconds. Then we will answer question four to six. Let's start reading now. Right, let's check out question 4. Look at lines 13 to 17. Or well, this is 13, 15, 16, 17. So in the blue box. Um, the end of text A, part 1. So this one is text A, part 1. Links the information in text A, part 2. Explain how the information is linked. Give two ideas. So... You got 10 seconds to do read this one and check out how it is linked okay let's check out the answer guys you may pause if you have not finished so in here you can see the word food change, the word food change is repeated in part two. This is part two is repeated. And the last words in part one is food change and again most food change. The second one is the end of part A describe food chain. Here, the list what eats what is called a food chain the list of what it's what 
it's called a food chain. The list of what eats what, it's called a food chain. That is the description of food chain. That is the list of what eats what. Now, the beginning of part B explains further about food chain. So most food chains start with plants which produce their own food by using the sun's energy. So this is further explanation about food change. We hope it's clear. We move on to question 4B. Question 4B still will get the answer from the same box. What do living things need to make food? 10 seconds. Okay, have you got your answer? Let's check it out. So it's the sun energy. You see the sun's energy. Which plant produce their own food by using the sun energy. The sun energy, that's how living things need, that the plants need to make food. Next, we move on to 4C. Question 4C, which word tells us something is very tough and strong, take one voice, it's specialized, hardy, extreme, or successful. The same, we get the answer from in here only. Okay, let's check out the answer, guys. So it's hardy, is the word. Hardy means tough and strong. Only specialized hardy plants can survive the extreme conditions. Alright, next we move on to question 5. Here we go, question 5a. Which type of book is this text from? Tick one box. Is it a picture, dictionary, a book of maps, a book of legends, or an encyclopedia? 10 seconds. This is part A, part 1, part 2. So we're talking about text A, part 2 still. Right, let's check out the answer, guys. So, guys, so it's an encyclopedia. So, we'll get this information of from an encyclopedia, not legends. Not math or, or even dictionary. So this is the correct answer. Next, question 6. Okay, question 5 is done. 5 eight. No, 5B. We still have 5B, sorry. So 5B. Oh, question 5B. The table below describes the food chain. Complete the table by summarizing the information in the text. Name carnivore. Brief description eats meat. Example from the text. So what are examples of carnivore? And we have the next table is about herbivore, and also the next table is about a example is plant. So there are three marks for this, three short answer. So try to get your own answer. You give them about 10 seconds. If you're not finished, you may pause this video. Right, so carnivore, carnivore, let's reveal the answer. Here we go, it's clear, it's small, but I hope you still can see, guys. Carnivore, example is polar bear. Uh, let me hear the answer. So carnivore is the second, they start from secondary consumer. They eat meat next. Herbivore is something that eats plants, an animal that eats plants. 
uh, living organism that eats plants so uh, herbivore is here a moose so is plant the moose eats grass and moss it is plant next a plant creates own food is called producer So the producer is here, create his own food. Uh, so the plant produce their own food. So it was clear from this one, two, three answer slot. Next, we will go on to the next question. Here we go, question six. The information is organized in a way that makes it easy to read. How is the information organized so from here? The same passage. Okay, let's check out the answer, guys. You have not finished my pause this video as usual. Okay, question six. It is organized into a paragraph here. That's how it is organized next. We see question seven. Well, question seven. Now read text B in the insert and answer. Question seven to eleven. Text B is in here. You may take a screenshot and print it out if you like to, and so you can have your students or child practice with the insert printed out. It will be easier for you. Uh, this is the first page. This is the second page. The end. The bottom part and this is the top part. So let's start reading for question seven until eleven. Next, point number three and four. All right, let's, it's the end. Let's check out question seven. The writer organizes text B so that it's easy to read. Describe three ways the writer organizes the text. Okay, this is text B, three ways. So, 10 seconds. Okay, let's check out the answer, guys. Here we go. So the writer uses subheadings. Let's go to subheading. Uh, here, here. So the writer uses bullet point here. The bullet point. The steps are arranged in numbers one, two, three, four. Right. Okay. Now it's clear. Do you have any other option as your answer? And you need to clarify. Please feel free to write down in. Men's section in Max Skin Class Paper by Susan Miro. Alright, next question 8. Question 8 How do you make sure that you stay safe while you are making the lichen garden? So you got 10 seconds from now.
the last three times bell. Okay, let's check out the answer, guys. So the answer is us and a dog to help you. Yeah. Make sure that you stay safe during when, while you're making uh, the lichen garden. Next, question nine. Here we go. Question nine. Give one two word phrase. So the answer should be two word only. That means final action. Ten seconds. Okay, let's check out the answer, guys. Here we go. It's a finishing touch. This is two words. That means final action. Next question, 10. Okay, question 10. We got step 3 of the instruction improving the look of the base. Give one example of a noun. So here, a pronoun, a verb, an adjective. 10 seconds from now. Okay, let's check out the answer, guys. So, a noun means uh, examples, edges, pronoun is it. A verb is to make. A subject adjective is move. Right, so if you have any other option, please feel free to write down in masculine past paper by Susan Hira. Uh, here's an explanation of what is noun, pronoun, verb, adjective. If you already know, you may skip this explanation. Well, a noun is the name of person, place, animal, or thing. Example, horse, apple. So, our answer for noun is edges. The name of an object is edges, edges of the base. Alright, next. A verb is uh, basically an action word. It indicates action or work example realize walk see look sing sit listen it is so in our answer the verb is to make an action to make to make the edges All right next pronoun is Replace the name of a person, place, thing, or idea in sentence like he, she, it, we, they, him, and it is it. In our answer, the pronoun, the pronoun is it. Edges of you like you could even paint it. Next, adjective. So we have discussed earlier the adjective describes a noun, so it can be color, size, sound, shape, number, taste, weather, texture. Example, do, big, loud. Oval, feel, sweet, cloudy, smooth. In our answer, the adjective is smooth. All right, let's move on. Here we go, question 11. What do you have to do regularly to take care of your life? And learn 10 seconds. The tips is the previous question, you get the answer from here. So the next question, you'll get the answer after this box. So start from here and find answer. Alright, let's check out the answer guys. You may pause if you have not finished. You get the answer from this part only. So you have to spray it lightly with water. Spray them lightly with water. Alright, let's move on. Now we are in question 12, writing. 30 minutes for this section. So this is very important this section as writing is also as important as the reading. Uh, write instruction about something that you know your instruction could be about a different craft project from the one in the text, a recipe. 
that is popular in your country, a game such as a board game or a computer game, or an idea of your own planning. Spend up to five minutes making notes to plan your writing. So from here, you write some notes, you can develop your writing to a nice paragraph. Five minutes here. And you're given two full pages to write your response here. Uh, there are some tips for this writing session. First of all, don't write less than half pages. Try to write at least up to one or one and a half pages. And the point number two, the story should be your writing should be relevant with the task given, clear and consistent connection with the reader. Your ideas is organized into well organized paragraph. You must use a range of appropriate uh, sentence structures, correct grammar, punctuation, and of course spelling. All right, that's a tip for writing. Have a more time of writing. So today we have discussed English provision test, paper one, primary level stage three from the year 2022, check link in the description for other useful videos. Like and share to anyone who might need this video because by sharing you will help others who are in need of these resources and this is the link for our YouTube channel. If you click this symbol under this video in YouTube, uh, you will go to our home page, main page, and you can see all other useful links and information uh, for past paper from grade 3 up to grade 12. Right? Um, bye. And if you have any question, comment, idea, please feel free to write in the comment section. Or if you have any challenging questions or unsolved past paper, you may write email to us. And we will see what we can do for you. So today conduct a discussion is conducted by study with tuition online. We provide online tuition for this subject and also the syllabus. Email us if you're interested to join us. Bye bye and see you in the next video. And don't forget to ring the bell so you'll not miss any of our latest videos. As we keep updating our resources daily, weekly, monthly, yearly. Okay, bye bye and See you in the next video. God bless you.